1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today, this one's dedicated to my friend Mark Montiel. If you were listening to him on the radio, especially in the year before he wound up leaving, you may recall that one of the things that he loved to talk about the most, and he used this term over and over again, the storms in people's life. And a lot of that had to do with the fact that he was going through a storm in his own life, and I'm not going to get into any details, but he was going through one of the most traumatic things a person can go through. And every single day, he still got on the air and talked to other people about their problems. That was just part of who the man was. But he loved talking about this, I think not because he, he liked hearing about other people's pain, but because he wanted to help them with that. And sometimes he understood that the best way to do that was to talk about it and try to figure out a game plan of, okay, how do we figure out how to get through this storm? How do we deal with this storm that's there? Let's not be in denial about it being here. Let's figure out a solution. He talked about the storms of life just coming up like the weather, sometimes without any warning, and you just have to deal with it and figure out a way to, to bunker down and, and to weather that storm until it's over. And so in his honor, I wanted to do a story about that. And our passage today comes from the book of Luke. Chapter 8, it's a story I'm sure most of us are familiar with. But as they were sailing along, he, he talking about Jesus here, of course, fell asleep and a fierce gale of wind descended on the lake, and they began to be swamped and to be in danger. They came to Jesus and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. And he got up and rebuked the wind and the surging waves, and they stopped and it became calm. And he said to them, where is your faith? They were fearful and amazed, saying to one another, Who then is this, that he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him? This was one of Judge Montiel's favorite passages in the scripture. And I have to agree. One of the reasons it's so impactful is because it shows the apostles who many people often think of as these great spiritual giants that just didn't have any problems, that they had this stalwart faith, that they died for their beliefs. Yeah, but they didn't start out that way. They started out like you and me, having all kinds of doubts. They saw this storm, and keep in mind, a lot of these guys, not all of them, but a lot of them were fishermen. They were kind of accustomed to storms on the sea, and this one was one of the like, oh gosh, we're going to die. There's, there's no way we survive this. That's how they saw this storm. And Jesus, who is asleep in the hole of the ship, which I find hilarious, they wake him up and he's just kind of waking up from his sleep and he's like, where's your faith? You guys realize I'm in the boat with you, right? Why were you afraid that you were going to die? Now, maybe I'm reading a little too much into that because I'm a sarcastic person, and because of that, sometimes I, I think of Jesus being a little bit sarcastic, too. But you'll notice that he didn't scold them in the sense that he he fixed the problem. Like, like, why would he scold them if he was just going to get up and fix the problem, which he did anyway? I think a lot of it had to do with teaching them a lesson because, see, the storm was not the issue. Storm wasn't the problem. Their faith was the problem. See, they should have had enough faith that the storm could have continued on and they would have been fine. But the question is, why would they have been fine? Because Jesus was in the boat with them. Jesus' mere presence in their boat, or to us, presence in our life should be enough for us to know that we're going to be okay. Storms are going to come. They're going to look really, really bad. 
And there's going to be times where there's doubt in our mind and we think, how on earth are we ever going to get through this? How do we survive this? There's no way. There's no way that we get through this. But what should change that for us, what should give us perspective and to know, no, we can make it. We'll be okay. Is that we know that Jesus is in the boat with us. You see, Jesus uses this as a teaching moment. He teaches us about his power, about his ability. And when we do have the storms in life, yeah, Jesus has the power to just step in and go, peace be still, okay, it's done. I'm going to go back and finish my nap. That could have happened. And that's something that Jesus can do for us. Any problem that we're having, it's not too big for Jesus. He can just walk out the, the boat and say, it's done, and it's done. Simple as that. But the thing that he's trying to tell them here is, if you had the right kind of faith, you wouldn't need to see me calm the storm. You wouldn't need to get me up and disturb me from my nap. Not that Jesus was like mad at them or anything, but you know what I'm saying. He's like, you wouldn't need to have done that because you know I'm here with you, so you're going to be able to weather the storm anyway. See, I think sometimes, especially as young Christians, we make the mistake of asking God to just get rid of the storms. Whenever we're doing something, Lord, just please make this go away. Lord, please just make whatever I'm doing through, whether it's the death of a family member or some kind of horrible sickness or financial trouble, whatever it is, Lord, just, just make this go away for me, please. And there's nothing wrong with making that request, but ultimately, shouldn't we want to get to the point to where what we're actually praying for is, Lord, give me the strength to get through this storm. Lord, help me see the way out. Help me to make it through. Give me the endurance I need to do so, to navigate this water and to make me stronger in the process. See, that's the kind of faith that Jesus was looking for in his apostles. They came short in this instance, but eventually, much later, after years of walking with Jesus and walking the path of a disciple, they get to that kind of faith. And that's what it takes. And I guarantee you, because I, I I didn't I don't claim to know the man super well, but I did get to know him pretty well over the the brief time that I was allowed to have with him. I'm telling you right now, if Judge Montiel were here, that would be the message that he would give to you: that God can get you through any storm. Maybe he comes and fixes it, and it just goes away. Or maybe he expects you to actually navigate the waters yourself and just trust because he's in the boat with you that you'll make it through. But here's the thing, he has to be in the boat with you for that to work. If Jesus is not a part of your life, if he's not in your boat, as it were, then the storm might actually destroy you. There is a chance that that could take place. And that's part of, a, that's part of the reason that you need to invite him in. Because once you've done that, the storm can't hurt you no matter how bad it is. It may rough you up, it may scare you, but it's not going to take you down. It's not going to sink you. Because it's not going to sink a boat. It doesn't have the power. There is not a storm strong enough to take you down when Jesus is in the boat with you. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel, but the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.